What's up everybody, Roger and Victoria here from the Disc Kingdom Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the D23 Expo and what we're all expecting, um, some big announcements for Epcot, from some big changes. We did an episode earlier this week where we were talking about the Ratatouille rumours and the, the permits that have been filed for a building it but we want to go a little bit deeper we want to kind of throw this kind of right up in the air and say basically well i think definitely that d23 the expo this year is going to be there's going to be lots of concept art and announcements made about what's coming to that park um hollywood studios is currently going through a major um reboost um they're putting in star wars land toy story land and we know that's been going on animal kingdoms just had pandora and we've got all the nighttime stuff. And then obviously the Magic Kingdom has had all of the new fantasy land and new stuff done there. So Epcot technically would be next. Because um, also these announcements that can tend to happen at D23 can be two, four, six, eight, ten years away. So I think they might just want to get get it out there and let everyone simmer down if they do it. But um, so what have you been sort of hearing on the grapevine over there? Uh, ooh, well, it's a lot of stuff. But um, basically... <laughs> They want to have all these things done in time for the 40th, you know, the 35th just passed, and a lot of fans were kind of surprised that not much had happened, mm. and then, you know, you, you all put two and two together and realize, you know, the 40th. Yes. So, based on what I saw, it's going to be like a four or five year plan, they're going to have everything done by 2022. Um, let's see, the Leave a Legacy tombstones are going to be gone, the little, you know, things at the entrance, they're yeah. going to be gone, there's going to be a new entrance. Spaceship Earth is going to be getting an update. That's Death Star. Sticky. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's been wanting the Death Star. <laughs> Ever since oh. I saw that thing of Rogue, Rogue One where they like turned it into the Death Star, it's just looking at it going, makes sense. I know it's just, it just turned it into, it's like I'm watching that fight, you know, you see that Star Wars fo- uh, show over at Hollywood Studios, go, they should be doing it at Epcot. It would just look awesome on that backdrop. But anyway, okay, we can't, okay, yeah. anyway back to <laughs> back to what you're saying <laughs> so he's a fan of the death star yeah but um so um universe of energy we all kind of knew was teeter-tottering between a guardians of the galaxy or tron um i'm not i'm personally not a fan of that ride anyway but um mission space is already doing its refurb right now so yeah. it's gonna be a new on-ride film cosmetic upgrades um figment is possibly going away for good so it's being said that Inside Out may replace the journey into imagination. And they could have Figment do cameo. Yeah, with a Figment cameo, which makes sense. Yeah. I know I know a lot of people are going to be possibly in an uproar about that, but... Yeah, he's, um, he's had his time. Yeah. Um, the land is going to be getting new upgrades, including the Circle of Life um, fable. It's going to get replaced. Soaring around the world's already had a three verb, so it's going to be good. Um, the Seas with Nemo and Friends will become the Marine Life Institute. That one I did not see coming, actually. Okay, yeah. So, I can, yeah, that one, and uh, this one's been going around for years, but a new world showcase pavilion. Mm-hmm. Where it will either be Puerto Rico, Brazil, or Spain. Uh, <laughs> I think it depends on where more visitors are coming from. And also, what, co- <laughs> co- also what yeah. country is willing to pay... Because that was always the big thing, wasn't it? The countries had to pay to kind of be in there. Um, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, w- were there any other rumors on that one? Because I know also I think there's been talk of whether or not there's going to be like a proper um, building for essentially like a showcase for like the, the food and wine. Kind of where that building is at the minute, which is kind of useless, but something permanent. There's also been rumors of that. I mean, a lot of these rumors are very much Chinese whispers and, you know, they could very much change very easily. But um, anything else? Uh, let me see. Oh, Illuminations possibly getting replaced, which I can definitely see happening because Wishes is on. If Wishes can get on the chocolate block, then Illuminations tend to. And Ratatouille we, we discussed in a previous episode. Yeah. And the final one is Coco replacing Grand Fiesta for at Mexico Pavilion. And that's a, that'd be a shame because I think that one's a good. I still think that's a a nice Disney fied ride. It works. Obviously, the, the trouble is I don't know whether the Free Canaros really connect with kids nowadays. But it's Donald Duck, so I think personally I'd be like, yeah, leave that one alone. Put in something, you know, take out the old Canada or the Chinese movies and put something there. You know, that would be kind of cool instead. Um, you know, like a Mulan attraction or something like that. That would be great. But 
as far as like those rumors, some of them I've never heard of. The, the like the the Marine Institute turning that into a, a, a like a Finding Nemo thing. It kind of gets into this thing of, and I'm going to be like, this is where they basically need to Disneyfy Epcot, and this is where yep. this is it needs to become another Disney park full of franchises, full of things. Now taking away the nostalgia and all the dudes at the back. You know, looking at it now that, you know, if they were building any new attractions, it's going to be connected to a brand. It's going to be connected to a franchise that they can use. And that is instantly a money draw. Um, That's very So turning, like, we've already got the Finding Nemo attraction. You've kind of got the water world area there. You know, it could do with an update that, because the aquarium isn't very good, really, compared to nowadays, you know, from... You sort of, it's a bit of a small aquarium, and the dolphin. It's, it's when that got built, it was a different time. You know, aquariums were different, but the, now people want to see a lot more space for them, and they don't want to. I like, I love seeing an aquarium. I love going to them and seeing them and stuff. But it actually looks quite small and dinky compared to what you know, even my like local aquarium now. No, absolutely. I visited. Uh... Not last weekend, but a few weeks before, and I actually went in there for the first time since maybe like I was an annual pass holder two years ago, and I re- I don't remember it being that small mm. at all. No, I mean they've got like turtle talk and stuff in there, so it it makes sense to kind of finding Nemo it because it pretty much already is. Um, so rebranding that would make a lot of sense. The land I do think needs a bit of an overhaul. Um, obviously Soarin's pretty been done already. You know, changing the 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 Lion King thing would be different. I think that whole attraction about being taken around, around a, a sort of a fake, uh, sort of food engineering place. I, it's a situation now where I'm sort of looking at it and going, that attraction or that space and that whole boating area could be used for something so much more fun. And it can be educational in a different way. Just showing, you know, a plant growing in a water pot. It's, I don't know that whole area is a big area. Um, personally, would like you know, you know, sort of like based around the jungle or something like that. I I would love to see them do something with that land area because that whole thing it just feels very dated in there. Because doesn't even oh, feel absolutely. that very yeah. I mean, it doesn't even feel very futuristic or anything in there anymore. No, and honestly, like I ate a Sunshine Seasons on Friday, and it's it's definitely a product of its time. Like literally, the only thing that's changed in there is so on and. I can honestly be excited for an update in there. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to see a new boat ride go in there. Use, you know, use the track. I mean, they could redo it. It just feels a little bit like, you know, you're going around. There's a room with a with a screen with talking about, you know, crops and stuff. It's like, I know it, that's what it was originally for, but you know, it, there's a big area that could be used better. Figment becoming inside out. Um, or, I don't have a problem. I think inside out it makes a lot of sense going in there. It kind of fits with the imagination. Um, they could use, you know, they could have Figment with Bing Bong, and you know that could work. I think that would be a nice little throwback and throw them in there. Because um, I don't, I think Inside Out is a franchise that's going to be around a long time. I think they're going to be doing spin-off movies and stuff on that. So that would be pretty cool. And also just using upstairs. I mean, that whole area has been, and that whole building at the back has been underused for quite a long time. Well, they can't use the top anymore because that's the Disney Vacation Club lounge now. I was thinking the same thing at first, but I, I, think, it would be, I think they could get rid of that yeah. and use it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, also you've also got the old attract, the old um, Pixar. Was it the Pixar shorts or it was? All, to me, it's always the. Um, I think last time we went, it was Michael Jackson, but to me, it would always be uh, the. It's a Honey, I Shrink the Audience show. You know, there again, there's a massive, big room that they could do mm-hmm. something with. Um, the trouble is, I think the whole... And then you've got the whole... Um, was it the West and the East Side, which has just become a glorified meet and greet section. Um, which, well, they will be redoing that. You know, that all needs... You know, I don't have a problem with them doing meet and greets. I think that's a great place for that. Um, Ellen, I mean... You know, you could just put a sleeping pod in there. I think everyone would be more happier with it. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, I'm I'm more tempted to say I think Tron might be the one to slip in here because of whatever's going on with Marvel and Universal. It really depends on what they've done in the background. Unless they literally have done a deal 
and then bring Spring Stark Enterprises and some other bits and pieces in there and kind of really rev it up. Guardians of the Galaxy, just do that to Tower of Terror anyway. But, um, you know, it's that thing of, if they're going to do Marvel, I would almost think they would want to start from scratch because they've got the space. Um, that could be a fifth park if once they and, get the rights yeah. to it. And that's why I was kind of confused when I first heard this rumor because there were other rumors saying that, you know, they were going to get rid of Tomorrowland Speedway in Magic Kingdom, and that was going to be Tron. Yeah. So now I'm, I, I'm, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I, I personally, I mean, for me, the Speedway needs to go as well because there's one thing giving kids something to do, but it's very much, and there's, Disney is not a museum. And even Walt Disney said himself, you know, you have to keep it innovating, you have to keep changing, it's never finished. And it's not a museum, it's not there to be... Um, so certainly, you've got to keep a little bit of it, you know, and there's certain aspects that you can keep in and you can keep going along. But I always think Utopia takes up a lot of space for what it is, but we'll worry about that, another one. But <laughs> I think the whole of the world, the sort of, essentially the whole of future world, it, it is drastically in need of, and the fact there's so many empty spaces as well says to me that they're planning a major overhaul. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the trouble with having future-based things like, you know, like Future World and Tomorrowland is it catches up very quickly. Like, time catches up very quickly, and you have to continuously update. That's I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, that's why I think, like, going, you know, I mean, I'm not let's say Star Wars is something that I think it's going to be done enough somewhere else. Um, but I think going into space, going into different... I just think it's just going to become... They will lose the future world. It will just become different pavilions and stuff like that. And it will just represent different parts of Disney franchise. It will just become another park. Um, I think the World Showcase also, as we said... You know, I think, you know, there's plenty of room at the back of some of there to chuck in some Disney attractions. They need to get the franchises in there to kind of, attendance is dropping year on year. Because while, you know, I love it there, I love the World Showcase. I don't really like the Future World. You know, you pretty much could walk through and go straight down into the World Showcase. Because bar Test Track and Soarin', I don't really think there's anything else we really would rush to go and do. I honestly don't even rush to do those. I just go to World Showcase and just walk around. Like, there's really... I mean, the time, I only do Figment because there's no way. Yeah, I'm just, I think we did the same. But <clears throat> the other thing as well with, like, the World Showcase, it kind of sometimes almost slides into, like, like Disney Spring Zone. It, that's true. I think that's why I like it so much. And there's someone just to wander around, eat, drink... I mean, Illuminations going, that makes a lot of sense because that's been around a long time. Um, but no, I i don't believe that Epcot should just stay as... If it just stays as it is, it is just going to get more and more. The Epcot, the monorails are falling to bits. Things are just going to start breaking. And you really, we don't want just, you know, rehab, you know, like they did with Maelstrom, where they just update something. They need, they need freedom. To, and I think... If they can just go and kind of go right, Epcot is just another theme park with the branch with the brand, you know, with all the franchises, and there is no theme. I think that's actually what they need to do, rather than try and shoehorn a theme in. No, you know what? For Epcot, I absolutely agree. Like, like it's just it it worked as a concept, but now with the time that we're in, I feel like it definitely needs. If Disney is what's going to bring them in, then Put in Disney. I'm absolutely no stranger to change. I'm absolutely okay with it. You know, I mean, I remember, you know, when we were kids and we went to Epcot and we were sat in the in the um, the innovations and we, you know, we saw electric cars. I'm still waiting for that one. Um, <laughs> you know, we, you know, you had all this stuff about saving the planet and you're doing this and you know you got to you know look after your environment and all this lot and. That all is still there. Um, it's all still important, and I still think that should be an underlining thread of any kind of attraction to try and educate. I think you know that that's always a good side of things, but it's got to entertain as well. You know, you don't want to just go ride to a try, ride to a try. But I also want there to be family attractions. You know, so you, everyone can, the whole family can do it together. Because I always felt Epcot is a great family place. You, you pretty much can do everything together the whole time you're there. There's nothing kind of, you know, it's not that kind of 
sea world where okay how you know your parents stand outside while you go on the attraction that there's a lot more for everyone to do yeah i feel like not to go off topic but hollywood studios kind of had that issue too for a while because literally the only ride the whole family could absolutely ride is toy story mania right now mm. So, and I feel like Epcot is just on a bigger scale. Yeah, I mean, I do think that's that's definitely part of it. I think that's, um, but also Disney are churning out so many franchises that they they are producing so many different movies, so many different things that they've got in their you know repertoire now. It makes sense for them to use because people are going to Disney to see those characters and to see those franchises because that is what the Disney magic is. You know, when Disney ha created like the Pirates of the Caribbean and Haunted Mansion and it's a small, he didn't have as many franchises as he does now. No, no, they didn't. <laughs> no, you know, they didn't have that. And when, you know, it's that thing of, if you think back, it's like if you were to actually write a list and say, well, how many franchises have they created since or purchased since they designed Epcot? You know, if he had all those franchises um, he might have not have needed to, he would have probably done a, a, another Magic Kingdom just full of all the other stuff but it, I don't know, it's, I think nostalgia is great but nostalgia shouldn't get in the way of them, you know doing changes and I think they've either got to go back I can't see them going back to you know, the, making it all back to being science and, and futuristic because I don't think the money's there from sponsorship. I don't think the money's there from people wanting to go do it. No, I agree. That's why I feel like Inside Out for Imagination is going to be absolutely great because it deals with mental health, which mm -hmm. is a really big hot button issue right now. That would be perfect. So if they just incorporate things like that with Disney, then they'll do fine. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely, you know, lots of different things they can do. I mean, I like to say, adding Coco maybe to Epcot, but does that almost feel like just put another, put another attraction in, put that at the back of the pyramid, and you just walk through into it. I mean, it's a different thing of, like, how they get to it. But, you know, they are br branching out. You know, something like Mulan would make so much sense, and especially to go after, you know, you know, if they've got franchises and stuff that they're planning for, you know, China, you know, go after that. Go do for something um, different. And I can't help but feel like Epcot is. I, I'm really. If there is no announcements at the D23 Expo, I think there's gonna be. A, I mean, there'll be a lot of disappointed people because then it's gonna be another two, three years before anything more to the next one. And with this upcoming, you know, there's so much work going on over at Hollywood Studios that, you know, I mean, it's a lot of this work can go on in the background and take like, and it will take years to do. Yeah, I mean, I mean. Hopefully we see. Hopefully D23 doesn't disappoint as far as Epcot news. Yeah, that's just fine. You know, it's just that kind of thing of, you know, with, but I also think in some ways that if they can, you know, use some of their attractions from other parks, such as Hong Kong, Shanghai, Paris, and kind of port them over, that would make a lot, lot of sense as well. You know, that Iron Man attraction from Hong Kong would be great. And some of the, especially some of the stuff that's happened over in Shanghai, like that Tron cycle, you know, bring oh, that yeah. over, you know, a Tron cycle in Epcot in the Energy Ascent would be so cool. And, you know, it would be everlasting and it would be futuristic, but also at the same time, you know, a franchise. No, I agree. I mean, just based off of what I've seen on Pandora, I mean, it took a really long time, but the end result was absolutely worth it. So I feel like with them, it's amazing. Honestly, I can just see them doing so many great things for Epcot. Well, we would love to know what you guys are hoping to see announced at the D23 Expo regarding Epcot. We'd love to know your thoughts. Comment below or get in touch with us on the different social medias. You can find us over at DizKingdom.com. Hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. And also you can um, leave us a review on iTunes or etc. there. And Victoria, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter at he calls me PP And Instagram, he calls me Pineapple Prince. And on that note, guys, thank you very much for watching. See you guys soon. Laters. Bye.